This is Patrick Hart Ministries Young Catholics Respond, brought to you by Viva Guadalupe. Now, here's your host, Bill Snyder. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Young Catholics Respond here on Patchwork Heart Radio and also uh, Evangelism Radio. I'm your host, Bill Snyder. It is uh, a pleasure to be with you once again this week. Uh, as my guest today, I have a wonderful pro-life activist, uh, Bonnie Quirk. She is the executive director of Lake County Right to Life in Illinois, but has really been involved with the pro-life movement from day one. And um, we, B- Bonnie, uh, you, you're you're just a treasure to have on the program today because you have a wealth of knowledge and experience, uh, really fighting for life in the state of Illinois, uh, but all over the country. Um, so thank you so much for being uh, my guest here today. Well, you're very welcome. Um, so, Bonnie, I want to first talk about um, the the pro life movement. You know, um, this this show is the only Catholic uh, show on a Protestant network, and um, I know that one of the um, amazing gifts that our Protestant brothers and sisters bring with us, uh, or have in common with Catholics is the right to life and fighting for um, the right to life. Um, so this so this show will really connect with them. And I want to just talk with you about the history. Uh, maybe some people don't know out there, um, you know, history of why we have these marches coming up this week and next week. Well, I think uh, they're twofold. Um, the original intent of the march uh, in 1974 uh, was to point out a Supreme Court decision that most people were uncomfortable with. Uh, and as that March uh, years progressed, we, we went to commemorate the large number of unborn babies who were murdered in their womb uh, through abortion. It became an educational opportunity. It became a a way for people to witness and advocate for people who can't witness and advocate for themselves. And I think as the tentacles of the abortion movement moved beyond abortion into abortion for disability, abortion, of course, the Roe decision always was all nine months of pregnancy. There was never any question about that. Uh, You know, the media framed it as a trimester choice. Uh, It never was that. It was unlimited to the moment of birth. Uh, But now we have sex selection abortions. And so I think the march has evolved to a uh, both a spiritual and political and advocacy movement for all ages to witness to the sanctity of human life. Wonderful. Um, let's back up and just talk a little bit about abortion. Obviously, the you know the March for Life, um, you know, as you mentioned, encompasses so many things now. But uh, what really triggered it, as you mentioned as well, was the uh, Roe versus Wade decision that was, uh, you know, set forth by the Supreme Court. Uh, talk about talk about what a disaster. Uh, that uh, decision has been for our country as a whole, because I, because I believe, and uh, as you probably can articulate, it has, um, you know, infected every part of our society now. Um, so, so do you want to maybe just highlight a little bit about the disastrous decision of Roe versus Wade? Sure. Uh, it, you know, we knew we knew there would be a decision coming. Uh, states prior to the Roe decision uh, were legalizing abortion in the legislature. And in fact, it, uh, Illinois had a, a, a movement to uh, legislate abortion, but of course we didn't. But New York and Oregon and some other California, some of the other states had indeed um legalized abortion. So we had an inkling that a bigger decision was coming. Uh, And we have to remember that Roe has a companion bill, and that is Roe v. Wade, 
which legalized abortion, and Doe v. Bolton, which came down at the same time, most unusual in the history of the court to have two cases come down as companion decisions. And the Doe v. Bolton opened abortion on demand for any reason at any time, uh, and that it was an entirely the choice of the woman. Uh, a father could not intervene. A grandparent could not legally intervene. This decision uh, was totally a woman. Uh, there was a confluence bill in our, our society at that time. If you can remember, there was the contraceptive controversy. There was the woman's right controversy. There was a feminist controversy. And then the Roe decision came. So it was kind of like a loaded gun that went off. And, uh, you know, a, a, the decision came down seven to two. Uh, the battle has always been at the court level something that the majority of the public still don't understand. The only way we can get a reversal is to reverse Roe v. Wade. The only way we can reverse Roe v. Wade is to have justices appointed to the court who are strict constitutionalists, who view the Constitution as our founders did, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, the, uh, the other justices and many through courts throughout the nation view it as a living document which can be changed according to the will of the people or the legislature. So um, this puts the state in a particular uh, predicament or a particular um, idea that we can incrementally legislate, but we cannot overturn. So we can get bills like parental notice. Uh, we can get informed choice, uh, consent. Uh, we can get perhaps uh, a ban on disability abortions. Uh, 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 we can get a a ultrasound where women will be able to view the ultrasound before their abortion. Uh, but we cannot overturn. So this is what makes certain elections so important. Sometimes it's not about everything, but it is about the court. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, in, in today's society, when you talk about this issue, um, you know, most people are are incredibly uncomfortable talking about it uh, on at at any type of length. Uh, just from all the different ways you kind of you know highlighted this um, and talked about you know this being a living document or that the Constitution is being perceived as a living document and uh, the many different you know facets of it don't get f uh, fairly represented in our secular media um you, we have to rely on things like podcasts catholic radio um and and faith-based media to uh inform people about these decisions and uh we ha we're relying on um a new media this new undercurrent to maybe uh bring up these issues and and try to get it overturned try to get roe versus wade repealed and overturned do you do you think that that's possible bonnie that uh, Roe versus Wade uh, can be, you know, completely revoked, completely overturned, and and if so, um, where 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 and when will that happen? I think it it very much depends on who the if, if we remember our civics, the president appoints and the Senate confirms. Uh, you know, we have three distinct legislative branches. Uh, it, we have the uh, judicial, the legislative, and then, of course, the executive. The president's privy is to appoint 
And the, the court, many people don't understand, a Supreme Court appointment is a lifetime appointment. It is not uh, at the will of whoever is serving as the president. Once appointed and confirmed, it's a lifetime until the justice resigns. So to answer your question, uh, in a political sense, uh, with the president we have now, should a Supreme Court justice resign, I think he would appoint a strict constitutionalist. The Senate is elected, and uh, right now I am not sure a confirmation uh, could occur. Uh, look at the fight uh, Justice Gorsuch had. Uh, he's impeccable, impeccable. And, and yet they had all kinds of reasons why he, he shouldn't be confirmed. The next is a swing vote. The next justice will be the swing vote. So uh, will, uh, will somebody like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who's been on the court for a very long time and is older, resign? Will Justice Kennedy resign? Uh, will Justice Breyer resign? I don't know the answer to that. But I have every confidence uh, that a strict constitutionalist would be appointed who views the law through the Constitution as was originally intended and written. Wonderful, wonderful stuff, Bonnie. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have you uh, on the program today talking with me um, about the right to life uh, and the March for Life and really the activism that we can do, uh, things we can actively do. And that's what I want to talk about in the second half of the program, uh, the things we can do, uh, the marches uh, that, are, that are still going on. It's been uh, over 40 years uh, that the March for Life has been uh, going on in um, in, in this country, and uh, there's new ways uh, that you can participate even locally uh, with the March for Life Chicago. Uh, then they have uh, some marches out in L.A. I mean, this is this is really taking storm across the country, and I want to talk with, with you about that because, um, you know, I know that listeners can really get involved and, and, and do that and support life. So uh, we got to take a short break here, Bonnie, but as, when we come back, um, I want to I wanna talk with you more about uh, the things that we can do to uh, actively end abortion while we're waiting for um, the next Supreme Court justice to be a strict constitutionalist. So right after these uh, messages, we'll be back here on Young Catholics Respond. Our Blessed Mother wants only the best for her children and has given us a special place where she promises to help all those who appeal to her motherly love and protection. Telling Saint Juan Diego that here I will alleviate the sufferings of all those who love me and seek my protection. That holy place is now the site of the beautiful Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico City. If you would like to learn more about how you can visit this special place of grace, please visit vivaguadalupe.org for more information. Our Lady may be calling you now. Now back to Young Catholics Respond. Once again, Bill Snyder. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Young Catholics Respond here on Patchwork Heart Radio and Evangelism Radio. Uh, my name is Bill Snyder. I'm your host, and uh, we're continuing our conversation with Bonnie Quirk. She is the executive director of Lake County Right to Life uh, in, Lake, in Lake County, Illinois. Um, it is a pleasure to have her on because she is just a uh, plethora of information and, uh, and true, uh, just amazing spirit to stand up for life. Um, she does so much uh, to, to fight for the right to life. And um, this is the time of year we're fighting for the right to life, right, Bonnie? You bet. You uh, bet it is. <laughs> uh, here in January, it's the month of life. And um, in addition to that, uh, we've got some great marches going on um, or all around the country. Um, the, the, of course, the big one in Washington, D.C., but um, there's also some regional ones here uh, coming up. Uh, January 14th is the March for Life Chicago. Um, and, and, and I know you're heavily involved in that, Bonnie. Do you want to uh, maybe talk a little bit about the uh, March for Life Chicago first, and then we'll go off into the sure. other stuff. 
Uh, we meet at Federal Plaza on January 14th. Uh, March for Life Chicago is an incorporated board, uh, and we meet monthly. Uh, and our board is is widely comprised, really, of facets of the pro-life movement, all coming together, Students for Life, uh, uh, Relevant Radio uh, is represented, uh, the Catholic Conference, the Archdiocese of Chicago, Lake County Right to Life, the Pro-Life Action League, uh, uh, Aid for Women in uh, Chicago, uh, and we meet monthly. And uh, we formulate uh, what the keynote, uh, uh, our speaker list, it's a collaborative effort of the pro-life movement uh, with an outreach uh, to the Midwest. We're the largest Midwest March for Life. And this year we hope we will get, we hope we will outgrow Federal Plaza. Uh, which holds about 10,000. Since our inception, uh, Patrick McCaskey has always been one of our speakers. And the McCaskey family has been very generous in its support uh, for those values that we all cherish, uh, life, sports, faith, all of those values. And, uh, you know, they, they add a, a dimension to the march that perhaps other states don't have. Um, so I'm looking forward to hear Patrick McCaskey's new poem for life. I'm looking forward to hear Cardinal Supich and the Orthodox bishops uh, speak on the issue of life. It's it's certainly a time uh, to show the nation that the people in Chicago are pro-life. We the people are pro-life. Uh, irregardless of what any administration may want to impose, we the people uh, stand up and are dedicated to witnessing to the sanctity and value of every human life, no matter its age or disability. How beautiful is that, Bonnie? And uh, for our listeners, uh, Patrick McCaskey uh, is the uh, co-owner of the Chicago Bears. Um, uh, people who might not know uh, that he is the co-owner of an NFL team. Um, and the NFL gets um, press sometimes that goes the other way um, about about life and um, you know about sexuality and and everything else. And um, having a NFL owner that uh, or co-owner that stands up for the the value of life is absolutely massive. It speaks a ton um, to to uh, us as as people in the Midwest and say, hey, we believe that uh, all life from conception to natural death is protected. Um, and and just what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, involvement for him to have. Um, but. But in addition to getting um, the the area excited about it this weekend, um, how can people uh, get involved and, and, and come down? Uh, I know it's from 2 to 4 at Federal Plaza. Is it really that simple, just, just show up? It is so simple. Uh, however, you know, if, if you are going to travel, there are other opportunities for the entire weekend. We still have some dinner reservations open for our roast dinner, the Chicago uh, Roast Dinner, which is held on Saturday night at Petarino's in Chicago. And our speaker will be uh, the same as the keynote speaker, uh, Ramona uh, Trevino, who was a former Planned Parenthood clinic director who if you if they haven't read if your audience hasn't read her book uh, I would highly recommend it redeemed by grace is the name of her book 
and she will be our keynote. She will be also interviewed. We also have the USCCB lobbyist and the Illinois lobbyist just to fill us in on uh, what's going on in Washington. And I, I think uh, it, it, the uh, Speaker of the House just announced that uh, when the March for Life in Washington is going on, and that march will be January 19th in Washington, D.C., the House will be voting on the abortion survivor bill, which is a bill that says any baby that's born uh, with any type of prematurity or disability will receive the same medical treatment as a healthy newborn is entitled to by law to be taken care of rather than put in a uh, another room and allowed to starve to death or freeze to death as the case may be wherever the institution is. Many people don't know that that's going on. Full-term babies or premature babies born with a disability sometimes are just put in in uh, if the parent doesn't want them in a linen closet or a utility room and allowed to die no medical treatment no ability to have any in- <laughs> intervention wow. so that will be voted on the weekly march in washington so that's beautiful as well that's beautiful as well uh that you know we were just seeing the pro-life cause advance in advance um during the break you mentioned to me that uh, anyone who attends the march for life in washington dc um if they're catholic under the usual conditions gets a plenary indulgence as well right that is the first time that's ever happened and i'm delighted you know a plenary indulgence for traveling to Washington, D.C. And just as an aside, Bill, you asked me earlier if I thought Roe would be overturned. I go to Washington almost every year. Uh, I, I, When I was younger and my kids were growing up, they all went to Washington with me. And this year, uh, it, it, I have grandchildren, and we are all going to Washington, D.C. So there will be three generations uh, witnessing for life in Washington, D.C. Um, I think a lot of people my age who've been in the movement since the beginning, it's the same. There are three generations, and when you go to Washington, You know, one of the great things about going to Washington is you see a sea of humanity never covered by the media. They never tell you there are almost a million people there all on their own dollar who have traveled all over from all over the country, uh, including Hawaii and, and the Virgin Islands coming to Washington to stand before the court march. The march goes down Constitution Avenue and ends at the court, standing there peacefully praying and witnessing for that overturn of Roe v. Wade. Uh, And it really doesn't matter how many, you know, right is right, even if there's only one person who says it. But when you see that sea of humanity, it gives you that uh, extra boost to continue on to witness for life, no matter the difficulty. Yeah. And, you know, without the cross, there's no resurrection. So, But every so once in a while, just like Easter Sunday, God sends that special uh, witness for everybody. And those are the marches. They energize people. The March for Life in Chicago with the Crusaders in their yellow balloons. And this <laughs> year we'll have Carmel High School's marching band. Uh, it, 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 energy witness and to know that this movement just is a movement of God. It's a spiritual battle. We fight it in the public arena, but generations will continue it. Hey, absolutely. Until, until in God's time, he overturns it, and it will be in God's time. Bonnie, I 
only have a few minutes left. These programs always fly by. <laughs> you know, they never they never as long as I need them to be. Um, but I want to make sure that you know, because I know that you do so amazing work at like uh, Lake County Right to Life in Illinois. That um, I, I just want to give you the opportunity to you know talk a little bit about what Lake County does, and I know that um, you do a lot with um, you know you know abortion, um, you know uh, to, to end abortion, but but also a lot to help women uh, who might be in a precarious situation. So uh, I'll let you just talk a little bit about um, you know what what you do at Lake County Right to Life, and uh, make sure you give us your website and and everything as well. Sure. Uh, at Lake County Right to Life, I co-founded with a gal named Jean Sinovic. In 1973, we got together and thought it'd be over in a year uh, that uh, the entire nation would rise up against the killing of, of innocent human life. And when it became apparent uh, it, it, over the year uh, that that was not going to happen, uh, we founded Lake County Right to Life, incorporated it as a 501c4 for your audience. That is a legislative ability uh, and with an internal C3, which is the educational component of Lake County Right to Life. So we are active in the legislature in trying to get bills passed that protect life. And we're active in the educational realm and a about five years ago, we formulated a political action committee, uh, which works within the election process to see that we get pro-life candidates elected. Uh, we partner with two crisis medical centers. Uh, one is right here in Lake County, uh, Informed Choices. They're a medical clinic. Uh, and the other is Aid for Women in Chicago. Uh, which also is a medical clinic with an outreach out here in Des Plaines Heather's house, which is a, a home for uh, mothers who um, need a place to stay while they're carrying their baby and uh, 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 maybe for six or eight weeks after. So uh, I, I would say we do it all, and we're www.lcrtl.org. And our email is lakectyrgl at sbcglobal.net. We're in the phone book. We're in Grace Lake, uh, but we cover Lake County. So um, come on down to Chicago, to the Federal Plaza. Join thousands of your like-minded people and witness and advocate for life. It may be cold, but offer it up. Offer it up for a woman who's contemplating not keeping her baby and having an abortion. Offer it up for the families who've been taught, you know, torn apart. Offer it up for the uh, strength and stability of the pro-life movement. Um, life is never easy. And a little cold never stops anybody. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I, I'm certainly looking forward to being down there with you, Bonnie, uh, and uh, bringing a bunch of people from Wisconsin uh, down there uh, to the March for Life uh, Chicago on on Sunday. So looking forward to being there with you. And uh, looking. thank you so much for uh, empowering our audience uh, and informing our audience just like uh, you do um, every day. But I appreciate you doing it with uh, me here on Patchwork Heart Radio uh, um, and and just uh, sharing with us about the the uh, the importance of the right to life and also the importance of standing up by marching. So I really appreciate that, Bonnie. Great, Bill, and thank you for Wisconsin's support. There are all kind. Of, in fact, Bishop Hine is one of the speakers uh, at, at the March for Life Chicago. So coming from a neighboring state in Indiana. So uh, there we have Wisconsin, Indiana, Iowa. We have buses coming from Iowa. Uh, so join the Midwest March for Life Chicago. Stand up and be counted. That's what God wants you to do. Amen. Well, this has been an episode of W. Uh, has this been an episode of uh, Patrick Hart Radio's Young Catholics Respond? Until next time, from all of us here at Patrick Hart Ministry, I'm Bill Snyder. Keep beating to your Catholic heart. This has been an episode of Young Catholics Respond. For more information about this program or Patrick Hart Ministry, 
visit patchworkheart.org. That's patchworkheart.org. Or email info at patchworkheart.org.